Hey, it's me, MLB. Here's chapter 36 of Gains, and this one is titled, What? What? Mina, so you said directly to the sparkly-eyed, bubbly pinkette. You're always trying to pair people up. It's making Yin uncomfortable, she stated bluntly. Oh my god, thank you so much to you. You whimpered internally. She was right. It was making you feel uncomfortable. I'm living off crumbs here. I want a whole biscuit, Mina wailed. What if it's not a biscuit? Hugger Curry asked. It has to be a biscuit, Mina cried. But you know who else has his eye on Yin? Juro said calmly from the back of the group, sitting under the shade of a tree with her back leaning up against the trunk. A complete dark horse to this conversation. Back ago. There was dead silence for a good 20 seconds. All you could hear was the sound of the wind in the leaves and then the sudden thumping of your heart. Back you go? You screamed internally. Wait, what? Back you go? Back you go? Eureka asked with surprise, mirroring your own internal conversation with yourself. What do you mean, back you go? He totally has a thing for Yin, Jiro stated calmly, her son reveal shooting you straight between the eyes. You stared at her, racking your brain trying to work out how she had come to this conclusion, but you didn't have to ask yourself too many questions because Hagakure then asked the questions for you. How do you know? She asked Yuro, her clothes jumping up and down as she barely contained her excitement. Uh, as if you guys haven't noticed how he watches her, Jiro said calmly, like she was telling you all that there was grass underfoot. Like, dude, it's so obvious. Even Mina was shook, stunned. Weave had been snatched. What did she say? Wait. Hold on, Bakugo? Mina finally said. How? I... Literally, Bakugo has his eyes on Yin 24-7. You haven't noticed because you're too busy trying to match Yin with Kiri, but there's definitely a love triangle going on there, Juro said before taking another sip of her drink. All eyes were suddenly on you. I... Wait, I, I didn't even notice myself. I... You rambled, suddenly on the defense. Yin, what's your secret? Mina gushed, falling onto you and giving you a hug. You're so magnetic! Um, I think you got it all wrong. I don't know if either of them are looking at me in that way, you pleaded. But kind of feels nice to think that maybe they might like me, you added internally. I have to keep a closer arm back and go now, Mina said slyly as she sat back down and let you go. Same, Eureka added in mischievously. Guys, you wailed in a sing-song voice, which led to the girls having a little giggle and chuckle about this whole thing. There was more sparse conversation about it, and then it shifted to Eureka and Jiro and their potential love interests, but your mind was still reeling at what Jiro had said. Well, he's sometimes mean to me, but I don't think he actually means to be mean, you thought, thinking about back ago. He did ask me to come and get food with him too, though. You wouldn't ask someone to get food with you if you didn't at least tolerate their presence, you wondered. After ample time had passed, you all got up again and made the final hike to the lookout at the top. There at the peak of the mountain, in the fresh air watching as the sun slowly sank towards the mountain tops in the distance, you all had dinner. The colours in the sky were gorgeous, soft pinks that blended to orange, blues and yellows. You couldn't have been happier, and the food that you'd chosen to bring with you had been pretty good too. You weren't sure if it was just because you were starving or if it was the outdoors, or the fact that your food was pretty much on par with everyone else's, but you felt so content and full by the time you finished everything. We need to take a picture, Yumomo said once everyone had finished their food. Yes, Mina said excitedly. I need to put this as my screensaver on the laptop. Oh, that's such a cute idea, Hagakure added in. Here looks like a good spot, Ribbit, so you said, standing in a position that was well lit by the setting sun. Everyone gathered around and smiled for the picture that was taken by Yumomo. Then everyone swapped around so they all had a picture of the group, including multiple funny selfies and other random pictures, which were fun. With the day commemorated, you all packed up and prepared to head back down the mountain. Wow, the sun's setting pretty quickly, you commented out loud, stopping for a second to note just how dark it had gotten. What once were pinks and oranges in the sky were now navy blues and burnt orange, only lining the horizon. It's okay, we have phones with torches, and we have Yumomo and, said Eureka, listing the potential light sources on her fingers. And you have me too, you added in brightly making your palms glow brightly as you held your hands up for the girls to see. They were all spellbound for a second. Oh wow, I've never seen it in the darkness before, Yin, your mama said with awe. It's actually very bright. Does it burn your palms if you maintain for too long? Um, kinda, he said, but I'm used to it. It doesn't hurt. Well, that's good, your mama said with relief. You all started to head off down the track with Momo leading the way with a self-made torch from her arm. 
Mina in the middle of the group with her phone light on, and you bringing up the rear with your palms glowing. It was enough light to keep everyone well lit, and you had gotten about 20 minutes into the downhill descent when you heard a little whimper. At first you weren't sure if it was just a combination of sounds from the girls in front of you all blending in together, but then you heard it again and noted that it sounded like it was coming from just off the side of the trail. Instinctively you turned your hands to the side to shine your light over to where you had heard the sound come from and the girl in front of you, Hagakure, stopped when she, her light source disappeared. Jiro too looked back as she felt like something had happened. What is it, Yin? Hagakure asked when she saw you had stopped. Shh. You hushed her gently so you could listen. The other girls kept moving on a little way as they hadn't quite realised that you had stopped so their voices moved away a bit and allowed you to hear a small cry again. There's someone... You whispered to Hagakure. Over there, they sound little. I didn't hear anything, Hagakure whispered. Hello, you called gently ahead, holding your light higher to see into the bushland ahead. There was no reply and you stepped forwards to get a little closer. The other girls in the group had now seen that something was up and came back quietly to see if they could help. What is that, Yin? Mina asked as she snuck up beside you. Oh, here's a bit of drama, a bit of excitement. Stay tuned for chapter 37 coming tomorrow.